I'm going to discuss this patient from the cardiologist perspective. Let's summarize our patient. He has an established cardiovascular disease with newly diagnosed diabetes mellitus and multiple cardiovascular risk factors. He has also a target organ damage in the form of left ventricular hypertrophy and some other risk factors such as overweight, family history, and lack of exercise. So the first step is to determine his risk and he is actually at a very high risk as mentioned by Dr. Maha because he has established cardiovascular disease, the target organ damage, and three or more major risk factors. So, based on that, we will uh, uh, discuss this patient in three aspects. The diabetes mellitus management, the control of risk factor, and management of coronary artery disease. First of all, we will go to the core of our session, which is the diabetes mellitus. This patient has this uh, metabolic profile that uh, corrected over uh, uh, eight months to reach an acceptable hemoglobin A1C of 7.1%. So the question, the question now, which drug to start with? Of course, a glycemic target is an appropriate target, and uh, we all need our patient to have an hemoglobin A1C around 7%. However, to reach this target, we can use a multiple drugs. Some of them are very, is, is very good, such as metformin, with a very good, a, a good data, a good previous data. However, there is no large study that uh, discussing the, uh, the, uh, uh, the cardiovascular outcome in the metformin. Some of these drugs has a neutral cardiovascular outcome, such as DDB4, most, most actually of DDB4, and some of these drugs may be harmful to the cardiac patient, such as the DZDs, uh, uh, saxagliptin as a DDB4, and su uh, some generation of sulfonylurea. And recently, uh, two classes were introduced into the diabetes market, market which are GLB-1 receptor agonist and SGLT2 inhibitor, and we'll talk about them. We'll talk about the trial of these two classes of drug from this point of view, the three-point maze, which, which are the cardiovascular death, non-fatal myocardial infarction, and non-fatal stroke. So talking about GLB GLB1 receptor agonist, <clears throat> they have uh, some difficulty and start uh, to reach uh, statistical significance of uh, improving the cardiovascular outcome. However, the liraglutide in the leader trial showed a significant reduction of a three-point mace with a reduction of cardiovascular death and non-fatal myocardial infarction. The semaglutide, which is which given once weekly through the injection, showed also a reduction of three-point miss, mainly through the reduction of a non-fatal stroke. And the oral semaglutide also showed a reduction of three-point miss, mainly through the reduction of uh, a non-fatal stroke, uh, as well as the dulaglutide in the Rewind trial that showed a reduction of a three-point miss and non-fatal cerebrovascular stroke. So going to the second class, and this is the three major trial of the, the classes, the, the drugs of the sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitor, which are, which are Embaric for the Embagliflozin, declared TME 58 for Dabagliflozin, and Canvas for Canagliflozin. If you appreciate, the Embaric studied the patient with a car established cardiovascular disease. However, in the studies uh, canvas and the declare TME58, they studied the patient of either established cardiovascular disease or a multiple cardiovascular risk factors. So what are the results? In the embaric, there was a reduction of the three-point miss, mainly through the reduction of the cardiovascular death. And the canvas show a reduction of three-point miss, but uh, with non-significant reduction of the cardiovascular death. However, they have uh, other beneficial effects, such as improvement of the renal outcome and reduction of hospitalization of the heart failure. This result was, con was confirmed in the declared TME58 that uh, the dabagliflozin showed a reduction of uh, hospitalization of the heart failure in the cardiac patient and the very high risk patient. So we have these two important classes for the management of the diabetes now. And according to the European Society of Cardiology, if we have our patient naive with established cardiovascular disease or very high risk or high cardiovascular risk, we should start with one of these two drugs, these two classes, GLB-1 or SGLT2 inhibitor. 
and if we didn't reach the target, we should we should go to the metformin, and if we didn't reach the target, we should go to other drug with a, a beneficial cardiovascular effect. DDB4, if the patient was not in the GLP-1 agonist, basal insulin, and maybe in some cases TCDs or sulfonary urea, however, it should be used in co with cautious in the patient with established cardiovascular disease. If the patient was already in metformin, this is good, so we will add one of these two drugs if the patient, uh, for the patient with established cardiovascular disease or is a very high risk. And if he is not achieving the goal, we should add any other drug. And this is the recommendation of the guideline. If a patient is established cardiovascular disease or a very high or high cardiovascular risk, we mentioned this before. And if the patient is a moderate risk, we can start with metformin. So if we look to the GLB-1, it can be, it have a beneficial effect regarding the reduction of arteriosclerotic event. Actually, they are beneficial in reduction of non-fatal MI and non-fatal stroke. And the sodium glucose transport, uh, uh, sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitor showed a reduction of the heart failure related, uh, related uh, endpoints. And actually, dabagliflozin was studied in the DABA-HF recently and showed a marvelous outcome regarding the patient's heart failure, even in the non-diabetic patient. So it can actually be used as a, a, a heart failure medication in the future. Okay, going to the risk factors. If we mention the lifestyle, it's very important. The patient should stop smoking. He should reduce his weight and reduce calorie intake, and he should exercise regularly. The blood pressure target, he has a blood pressure of 150 over 90. This is not acceptable. The blood pressure should, uh, should be lower for, uh, than that, with a target less than 130, but not less than 120, and a stolic blood pressure less than 80, but not less than 70. And the drug used here is the ARB diuretics, which is a, good, a very good drug, actually. But being the patient is not achieving the blood pressure target, we should add a calcium channel blocker to, for this patient. What about uh, his lipid profile? Actually, this patient uh, has a very poor lipid profile, with, and he is not achieving neither the LD target, HDL tar non-HDL target, nor the triglyceride. And for the LDL target, this patient being a very high risk, he should have uh, LDL less than 55 milligram per deciliter with more than 50% reduction of his LDL and non-HDL cholesterol less than 85 milligram per deciliter. And to do that, we should start high dose statin, either rosuvastatin 20 to 40 milligram per day or atorvastatin 40 to 80 milligram per day. And if we're not reaching the target, we should add ezetimibe. Then if we're not reaching the target, we should add BCSK9 inhibitor. What about the triglyceride? The first line for the management of triglyceride is still the statin, and the statin should be given if the triglyceride is more than 200 milligram per deciliter. But if the patient is not achieving this target and still having a triglyceride between 135 to 500 milligram per deciliter, so we should add the new drug, which is Icosabent aside in the, a high dose of 4 gram per day. This is based on the reduced trial. The reduced trial showed in the patient with established cardiovascular disease or a, a high cardiovascular risk, adding this drug showed a very favorable cardiovascular outcome regarding the reduction of the primary and the secondary cardiovascular outcome. So this drug is a future and should be added for the patient with a high blood triglyceridemia. The phenofibrate actually has a class to be, to be added to this patient. So it should be reserved if, uh, if we have a very high triglyceride and the ecosabent should be the first line in the management of this patient. What about the coronary artery disease? The coronary artery disease, this patient has a myocardial infarction from six months, so he should continue on the RAS blocker and the statin for the reduction of the cardiovascular death. He should continue on the aspirin for life and regarding the B2Y12 inhibitor, preferably the ticagrelor or brazogrel, class one to continue on these drugs for one year, and we may continue this drug up to three years if the patient has no increased the bleeding risk. The beta blocker should be uh, in the diabetic patient, should not be prolonged because it might be associated with adverse outcome. 
to so to conclude i think i reach my i i didn't exceed my time dr navid so to conclude we have now a prescription we can add some drugs and we can uh, uh, prescribe a more drug with a beneficial effect for our cardiac patient with a very high risk this include the new anti diabetic drugs with a proven cardiovascular outcome this include the new dyslipidemia drugs such as icosabent isil and dbcsk9 if the patient is not achieving the ldl and triglyceride goals in addition to the current medication of course this will come on the expense of the cost and the patient uh, patient may suffer from the increased cost of the the cost of this medication however i think we have an answer now if our patient uh, start to ask how can i improve my cardiovascular outcome and prevent a future cardiovascular event and thank you so much